people always drawn to the sky for determination and freedom. And uh, skyscrapers kind of give you that majestic feel. To build tall is actually very special. You're not hiding your identity. You're actually showing the rest of the world who you are. Skyscrapers in general represent more of strength, success, and it symbolizes commitment to the place that you're in. MBK was established in 1952 by the leading merchant families. It was one of the first local private bank in Kuwait as well as in GCC. Later on, upon discovery of oil, Kuwait became a very prosperous uh, country, very developed. Of course, this is in comparison to the rest of GCC countries. We were engaged in everything in Kuwait at that time, being the only bank in the country. The vision always was to be big, and we were going big. We knew what we can do. We found out later on, in the, in the, in, as we were evolving and years by, that, okay, whatever we do, Kuwait is a small country. There is a saturation point. So we have to think out. We started our expansion in the mid-80s in London, Singapore, and New York. We are in 15 countries, including Kuwait. Kuwait, being the headquarter of this bank, required more employees and staff. We really expanded significantly since we moved to this building. Just two or three years later, we found out that this building is not enough for us. We used to call everybody from different buildings if we have uh, meetings, and this is like a time consuming. That human touch with, with the team is not there. It's very important to have all your employees in one place. The idea started to materialize. Yes, we need a one headquarter that house 
all of MBK corporate staff. You can't be the largest company, you can't be the best thing that this country has and still stay in a square, lower building. We need something that we, we look up and, and we say, wow, yeah, that's us. We start with the form of the tower. It's a nice design when you look at it, yep. but still it resembles other buildings and we truly want a, an iconic building. We have to do something really drastic. To, something different. To, yeah. Yes, absolutely. So yeah. we, we needed the, and the shape, the, the, it looks like a sail and that, uh, that concept is really overused here in the region. Yes. Yeah. So Hassan came really with a nice brilliant idea and proposed it to the architect. Where uh, we told them uh, if you could reverse the convexity of the building, and uh, you really will come out with a different shape. Having the, the fat plates at the top yes. just maximize the efficiency, maximize the use yes. of the of the tower, yes. and this is where really a key focus. The inspiration that we we thought about. Uh, became inherent with the design. And I feel like the, the architects were able to deliver what we really wanted. It's an interesting challenge to find the right balance of um, creating a beautiful object, a beautiful player within a city, but also giving a client a very functional building that they can use for their own needs. We did a lot of models. You can see some of them behind us. We did literally dozens and dozens of models working on the proportion to get it just right. Design the way we say it isn't just you draw a shape and you're finished. Here you see a selection of, of our design models. Every single of these models is actually dealing with certain aspects, whether it's the envir environmental aspect, whether it's the functional aspect or floor area, etc. They all sort of tell different stories Every great architect in the world or artist, it just takes time to refine something. And when you when you found it, then it almost uh, hums. It's just, I think this is good now. Building a skyscraper, in particular in this region, is a very complex process, in particular achieving a sustainable lead goal structure. We have extremes in everything. We have extreme heat, extreme coldness sometimes, and, and a lot of sandstorm. So we had to be, it was very tricky for the architect to come up with something that uh, beautiful and nice, which can live with the elements of, of uh, our climate. From an environmental engineering perspective, climate is, is, is one of the most demanding in the world. It, it, it has extremes of temperature, 46 degrees, 47 degrees is not, is not uncommon, but, but, but coupled with extremely high humidity. It's a big challenge, but I think it's one of these things you shouldn't even question in this, uh, in this day and age. Should I live in a sustainable way? Should I recycle my waste? Should I use less energy? Should I drive a more efficient car? Should I have a more efficient building? It's just, it's just what people have to do.
the whole realm of uh, skyscrapers, you would usually notice that buildings try to fight for attention. With NBK, the building never wanted to compete for height or to be the loudest building or to be the highest or shiniest building in many ways. It's really a sculptural building. For me, I think the most interesting thing about this tower was its form and the fins. It's something where often with a skyscraper, you kind of just build tall. But this was doing something more than that. This was trying to be tall, elegant, and also um, think of innovative ways to use um, the structure as, as, as part of um, controlling the environment. Once you then play with the shading, we thought it's almost uh, like classic architecture. It's, it's columns, blades soaring to the sky, which on the other hand then makes it actually feel quite solid and, and permanent. You can see we have 28 fins, 14 on the east, 14 on the west, that smoothly flow from the base to the top crown of the building. The fins shield the building from individual direct cell again each of the offices so that you have diffuse light outside the building, which is still powerful, but we're essentially shielded from the direct cell again. All glassy towers feel slightly, they're here one day, are they still going to be around uh, in a few years' time? And I think when you look at the National Bank of Kuwait, you feel there's a, there's a permanence. I remember some offices in the morning will have to bring down the shade because they could not live. It's just suffocating hot. Other areas, no, it is. And then you get the air condition and everybody is, one is saying it's too cold, the other one is saying, well, my office is just too hot because of the, of the sun. There are four layers of glazing with uh, ceramic frits and gas in between the layers, creating to create a barrier between the outside and inside. In Europe, you don't need to do all of that. The building in general didn't take the easy way out. We did the solar studies, we did the sustainability studies, we created a geometry that responds to the climate, but at the same time, it didn't compromise the spaces or the experience that the end user has within the tower. What is incredible about this project, it has this very beautiful outside shape which unites it and you kind of think, particularly when you look from uh, the south and you see these gorgeous fins going up to the sky, there are incredible spaces which are very, very different within it. The entrance is dramatic. The whole ballroom is incredible. That was the finale, wasn't it? It's like fireworks. And then you get to the top and it literally, we designed it, but I tell you, on site, it blew my mind. This is uh, going to be the jewel of the crown. Yes. <laughs> huh? As I remember, most of the buildings in Kuwait, we used to have machinery on the top of the building. Normally with skyscrapers, what you have on the top of the tower is all the technology, all the air conditioning, all the water tanks. With NBK, we managed to actually free up all that space to have this 18 meter high dome, 300 meter up in the air probably the most amazing space on the whole project. It's one of the most complicated areas. We've got all the fins coming and merging together, and then they are supported off these two symmetrical arches, which um, stabilize the top of that, that crown. Really, it's a, an amazing space that, it's like 
very unique in the world. With the 18 meter high ceiling, uh, with the curvature of the seashell right at the top, with the skylight all around, uh, so you have a panoramic view 360 degrees without any obstacles, seeing the whole Kuwait. Chairman's Club is a little dream come true. Being on top of a tower, having an amazing, dramatic space, I, I can honestly not think of a lot of things that are more exciting than that. Within the boardroom space, you've got this ceiling height, you've got this table bringing all the board members together. And we wanted to create a cloud-like cluster of lights. And we worked on the idea of these really 500 or so floating disks of light. And how could we create that? In a way, that was the, that was the dream. For NBK, uh, the glass elements have all been handmade, hand blown. Sort of lying beneath this cloud like you know, uh, cluster of lights is the table uh, that's been designed for NBK. It's a 13 meter um, table. Um, supported only in two points. First of all, we have to speak about design. The idea of the, of the architect was create a monolith. So uh, a piece, a you know, solid piece, but so big, so huge. Without the abilities of our workers that are more than artists and probably we can call artists, real artists, it's not possible to do this kind of job. Carrara has always been taking more care of the architectural side of stone. So with stone has been used by the most famous architects in the world. This is an area that has uh, been traditionally used uh, for the stone industry since uh, Roman times. Michelangelo was taking material for his uh, architectural and sculptural work uh, in this area. For this job, we have uh, supplied uh, an interior, uh, interior floors for approximately 12,000 square meters of material. It's a very challenging material. Technically, working makes a difficult material to, to control, so you, you need a special effort to have a good product. But I think we have uh, succeeded in making a, a great job. These days, it's possible to work remotely, it's possible to work in cafes, on trains even, on anywhere you can get a signal, it's possible to work. So why have an office? Why create a working environment? And of course the answer is about collaboration. What we're always striving for is that people work in, in spaces that are special and that, that have some meaning or some purpose to it. And I think what's interesting in this tower is that everybody can have their unique special space. How do you create um, a building that facilitates that? How do you create a building that supports people in their desire for social interaction and, and allows them to uh, and supports their well-being as well, supports their health, their well-being and their general productivity. The people of NBK are actually the most valuable thing the National Bank has. If they have great people, it's a great service and it's great prosperity for, uh, for the organisation. 
want to offer the occupants of this building not only a working place, but also a place where they can feel themselves, they can find themselves. From the beginning, the client made very clear that one of the things he wanted is a very efficient tower. The first iterations of the design had a massive core. So we looked around who could come up with a technology to reduce that core. We managed to find a company in Germany called ThyssenKrupp. And they have this product called TwinLift. One lobby for 20 elevators and 10 shafts. In each shaft there are twin elevators running up and down on top of each other independently. As people are using the system, the system will learn and will get more and more efficient. And if people change the usage, it will also adapt to that. That element of the design is really where you know you'd say, "Wow, this is this is great engineering." How do we clean this building? This was a number one question when we finished the the form of the tower. The space on top, which is the most exciting space of this building. So there was absolutely no way to sort of ruin that space with some cleaning equipment. We had to come up with is a solution where the cleaning equipment lives in the floors below. It's like James Bond movies. All automated, push of a button. In a sort of almost futuristic way, it sort of moves out of the building, the facade opens, the kit moves out, unfolds itself, and is then able to clean the entire top of the building. Designing the BMU, one of the biggest in the world, was an issue. After you build it, about 120, 130 ton machine, you have to bring it up all the way to the 52nd floor, about 280 meters up in the air, and put it inside the building and let it slide on, on rails. Everything is just like unbelievable, you know, can we do this?
it's again, it's a mega project in a mega project. We're fortunate that we, we made it, we made it. MBK is a one-of-a-kind project. Its shape is not related to any of the tall buildings that you normally execute. We did many projects, but not with this a difficult form or shape of the design building. So it was definitely an exceptional design, and with it, there came challenges. You look around New York, Manhattan, uh, these, these places have a, a floor plate and it kind of copies its way up. Every part of this building was different. The project was designed using building information uh, modeling, which is being uh, updated through the construction process. So the project was designed in 3D from day one. Not every project will require it to that level, but I would say NBK wouldn't be possible without it. Currently, we have around 2,000 people with different skills working on site. Will not believe. Till today, we, we are working for 14 million man hour. 14 million man hour. The climate plays a very tough uh, factor on the contractors. Their working hours, their productivity is lower, uh, especially in the summertime. The location is a very difficult location on this project. Why the logistics or the transportation to the project have a limited time? And most of the deliverable materials came at night. During the day, because of the traffic and restriction from the governmental, even the casting of concrete is done at night. Do you believe this? I find this project much more complicated than I ever thought. Uh, unfortunately, in construction sites, uh, accidents happen and you try so hard to protect your site and to enforce certain safety procedures, but it takes just like one blink of a knife for something to happen the wrong way. So I was in my office and someone called me and I looked in my window and I saw the smoke coming up. I came down and the first thing I started, you know, shouting that people will have to evacuate. The wind was in our favor. So the, the blaze was going in the other direction, away from the tower, which saved us from fire catching the tower. It would have been a disaster. The flashback, what really what going through my mind is like 10 years of work, that you'll see it burning in front of your eyes. The thing that I really remember the most is how blessed we are, I keep remembering this, and how fortunate we are that none was harmed.
مستمعينا الكرام يسعدني ان ارحب بكم في هذا الاجتماع والذي ينعقد هذا العام في مبنانا الجديد الذي عد تحفه معماريه تجسد عراقه ماضينا وطموحنا المستقبلي. فعبر هذا التصميم الفريد والهندسه المبتكره الصديقه للبيئه التي تحاكي المواصفات العالميه تنعكس المكان المرموقة التي تحل المجموعة على الساحة المصرفية المحلية والإقليمية After waiting so long, it's uh, it's about time for many of our staff that has been with MBK for decades that we have a gift for them to move to this building, to this unique building. We have high hopes that this will be something that everybody will be happy with. When I go, if, I, if I'm, I'm sure, the feeling of pride will be from everybody and every staff member coming in such a big building. Now I pass by and you know, with anybody, and you know I'm saying like, oh, look, this is MBK, and, and you know, just makes me proud. time, the effort, the commitment uh, spent on this building is there to stay for such a long time uh, and we are really very, very proud of it. And hopefully uh, it will take us years to come and generations to come to occupy this building. I consider I'm part of a successful organization and accomplishing a project in this uh, magnitude. This is very special and uh, rewarding. I think the most important thing is the, the, the employee is satisfied with his environment of work and in, you know, with everybody else. We could just really take a deep breath that we got here where we wanted to get, and uh, but we finally made it. Believe me, it's very challengeable, and uh, I believe it's one of the most uh, challenging uh, jobs I I've been in uh, with respect to the design. Now we have another uh, challenge is to move to this building. <laughs> and to run it. But no joke, if you don't have the support of your family. If you don't have the support of your management yeah. and colleagues and management, management yeah, truly, yeah. Um, because problems that uh, you will face during the design yeah. and during construction. And now we become to the last uh, yeah. few meters under that. Yeah. Well, there are many happy moments and many sad moments uh, on the project. I. It's been a long journey. There are many, many good, uh, good experience. We met good people. Uh, sometimes we laugh at different for different reasons. Uh, I can't imagine uh, having done this uh, without uh, the help and support of everyone. Yeah.